that's just so special for uh, such our club. Our club, mate. Our club. Lastly, after 57 years of pain, it's coming home. Hello, Dees fans. I'm TJ, and welcome to the Year the Dees podcast. Today is episode two, and we'll be taking a look back at round one, Melbourne versus Fremantle. So we're going to have a bit of a, a 2020 hindsight review of the season that was. And uh, moving forward, we're going to be able to see the patterns and what really laid the groundwork down for the Dees to win the flag this year. So this match was on Saturday, March 20th, 2021. And uh, our first match for the season was, uh, I think it was about two weeks before this, when we got smacked by the Bulldogs in the pre-season game. Now, there was a little bit of a worry because Stephen May was taken out of the, that game with 10 minutes to go. We thought he might have had a concussion of some sort, so I was pretty happy to see him in the round one team. And then uh, Jay Lockhart also had that horrific testicle injury that happened. Uh, our big name recruit, Ben Brown, wasn't able to play because he was still coming off for his injury as well as Sam Wiedemann getting injured in the uh, in the preseason. So uh, in hindsight, like I was, I remember approaching this game cautiously, thinking, you know, Freo are a bit of an anything side, you're not quite sure what they're going to bring. So anyway, firstly, let's go through the teams and see what the difference is from our grand final team. So there was four differences here. We had Jones, Tomlinson, Jeddah and Hunt in the side where Viney, Petty, Bowie and Hibbert all were in the grand final game. Clayton Oliver was playing his 100th game, James Jordan was playing his first game and he's his third year on the list. Anyway, let's head on to the first quarter. First thing I noticed at the bounce was that we had uh, Max Gorn in there with Petrarca, Oliver and Cozzy Pickett. So this got me pretty excited because I'm like, ooh, uh, I'd love to see Cozzy around the ball because his pressure is immense and I think it can really cause some trouble here. I did notice that after that, because he did move towards the forward line and um, and Jordan come in and play that third midfielder role. After that first bounce, Fife moved forward and then Lever picked him up. So it did look like we were trying to play the loose man in defence along with one uh, one person less at the, co- at the contest. So. Our new defensive system looked really, really good with Lever playing against this uh, loose defender that was picking up Fife going forward. But being one person less at the contest, Frio won the first eight clearances and they got eight inside 50s from that. Now we had four intercept marks from those clearances and Frio really only had sort of two decent attempts on goal, but they missed both of them. Now early on, both teams weren't making the most of their chances and were really poor with their kicking forward. Both teams ended up kicking three points before Cozzy t- took a great mark and put the first major on the board. Big hanger there for a moment. Now Jones approaching game 300. Back to Spargo. There's Pickett now. Clever little ball. Deliberate approach. Keeps it low. Has he got the legs? He has! And celebrates with the crowd! Straight after that, we happened to get our first centre clearance goal of the year and our second major of the game. Now it's pretty exciting going back and seeing where we do these sort of similar bursting out of the centres, centre goals that we saw from the grand final. There's only one really in this game and that's here and Ed Langdon has a beautiful check side to kick this goal and I was like, oof, we're on here. Bonald, Ed Jackson delays the hand pass nicely. Langdon, check side, is he good enough? Uh, there's some nice bits of play here back and forth. I'll be showing highlights while we're going through. Petrarca got a nice goal resting forward. With speed, does nicely. Little fake pumping hand pass back to May. He's in everything at the moment. See something he likes in board. It's a beautiful ball to the Jordan. Opens up the attack in 50. Looks to the outer side. Petrarca had his name all over it. In the quarter, this time from 40. Leans back on it and enjoys it much more. And then we did see a mix of Jackson, Oliver, Jordan and Neil Bullen in the centre bounds. Now Neil Bullen does some nice work here but ultimately it doesn't pay off unfortunately. Both teams not really making the most of their opportunities. We had a few more and that's why we ended up four goals up. I think Fremantle in the end were kicking at about a 45 disposal efficiency which just isn't up to scratch. So we go into the start of the second quarter with a 24 point lead. 
Neil Bullen extracts it out of the contest to Oliver. Back to Petrarca. Releases the ball really quickly. Gets a nice bounce. Off Rich. Jackie Chan stole out of mid air. And Melbourne have got three. So we start the second quarter with Bon, Oliver, Petrarca, and Jordan in the centre. And we end up seeing a bit of a rotation through here as well. Tom McDonald uh, doesn't give up on a contest and stops an easy free bar. The ball drops to James Jordan, who in his first AFL game kicks his first goal, which is pretty exciting. It was also really awesome to see that he had his jumper presented to him by James McDonald at the start of the game. Um, I thought that was really cool. Spears it, but Hughes should have it covered and doesn't quite in the end. Opens the door once again for Melbourne. Jordan picks it up nicely, slams it towards goal, and he's kicked his first goal in the AFL. So it takes Fremantle up until 6 minutes and 36 seconds into the second quarter after kicking 6 points to finally kick a goal. So the Deeds kept them goalless for 26 minutes and 36 seconds. At this stage in the game, we had more intercept marks than they had marks. So you can see that we're really thwarting all of their opportunities. And what we will see throughout the year is that I've noticed is that we do have these really good 25 minute periods of keeping teams goalless. In this quarter, we saw some really nice stuff here from Jetta. Uh, there was also something that I really you know, noticed where Nathan Jones does a hospital hand pass to Oliver, where Oliver has to leap too high to take the ball. This is something that Melbourne used to do all the time, and it would shit me off the wall. Glad to see that we did get it out of our game later in the year, but it's just overdoing handballs, putting too much on them, and then all it ends up is in the ball up rather than us moving the ball on. Uh, Lever was at another level, like he was pretty good during 2020 but really going to another level with his intercepting and reading the play. But Neil, there's a, it's a great play with Neil Bull and Smother leading to an inside 50 with Fritch Marks. Fritch has a shot, I think he has a shot anyway, slightly off, T-Mac reads the ball the best, gets a mark on the, on the uh, boundary and is able to snap through for a goal. It was to the left and it goes that way again, won't quite make the distance. Right at the back of the pack though, Tommy. So far today, the number 25, hooks it round his body. Melbourne have got their sixth and McDonald's got his first for the season. So there's a bit of back and forth, they get another goal. We answer back after putting some pressure on Freya's defenders. They were dealing with a poor inside 50. Uh, the pressure there spills out from Cozzy. Harms gets on the end of it with Tom McDonald also getting involved. Low ball forward. Burst out of Meek's hands. It's handling under some pressure. Mundy overruns it. They make a bit of a mess of this Fremantle. Pickett bubbling around the footy. Harms. McDonald. Can he back to Harms? Should kick a goal and does. Mistakes from Fremantle and Melbourne pounce. Where Petrarca throws Fife away like a bit of trash, which is always a bit of fun. Uh, some decent effort from Spargo to win a free kick there. Some beautiful efforts from Neville Jetta. Uh, I really like how Jake Lever uses his body to win a contest here. The quarter seemed a bit more even than it probably should have been. Frio got two of their three goals from free kicks. Yeah, they're probably there, but like they're not kicking goals from earning it. They're not. It's not from coming from good play, it's coming from our mistakes of being a bit overzealous and giving away free kicks. So at half time we had 15 intercept marks, which is pretty ridiculous. So we kicked 3-2 to Frio kicking 3-4, making it a two point difference. We lead by 22 points. On to the third quarter. We start with Gorn, Oliver and Petrarca with Cozzy in the middle again. So this is uh, this, the second time out of a total of four times that he attends centre bounces in this game. You can see that um, they've had a bit of a chat for Emmanuel at half time and Frio start to lower the eyes, but we still happen to read the play and intercept, which is fantastic. Uh, there's some uh, great play with Pickett making something out of nothing. Unfortunately, Tommy Mack hits the post, but the play leading up to that was great. Some really good efforts there. Gets it out to Brayshaw. Clever little ball, really good kick as good as we've seen today. There's some great defensive play here where Jake gets a hand to this somehow, and then May actually opts to bump Fife instead of tackling him here. There's a great Spargo tackle that gets a hold in the ball. Oh, wow. Wolf and Harms. 
Jones. Really good tackle by Spargo. And the water. There's not much you can do about that as a player. And then Frio start kicking a little bit better and they're lowering their eyes a little bit more and they happen to kick two in a row. Now it's taken them nine minutes into the third for them to string two goals together and these two goals actually come from some pretty decent, decent play. There is some great play here uh, where Spargo can get it to Fitch. I really like Spargo's kicking and Bailey's running here. He splits two Freo plays to end up in space, which is some really, really smart football. Spargo actually had three goal assists in this game, so three of our goals from the game I ended up coming directly from his play and him setting up players. And sneak out the back. Here I go. Here's my opportunity. And see Bailey ducks out the back. Fremantle defenders got their hands on their uh, on their hips. Jetta had a really nice uh, intercept. Then there's a hold the ball non-call, which definitely should have been holding the ball. And then straight after, bang, holding the ball gets paid. It's amazing how often this happens in our game where. You know, like the umpire just gets something wrong. You know, it was def definitely there. And then the exact same call going the way of the team happens to pop straight up again. Some other really nice stuff in this quarter. Jordan, you know, put on a really nice smother. Gorn with his intercept marking. Lever ends up getting a punch away, which ends up in a free kick. From that, we have a successful switch of the ball to the fat side of the ground. And then, because uh, he has a wild attempt at a mark. Reacting. Hard running from Langdon. Teammates look after him. This time, Harms gets it. Fritsch provides something. Chips the ball. Pick it, he's, oh, he's way deep and way early. There's an amazing lever intercept against two players. And you know, leave it intercepting again, and this time we go coast to coast, and Spargo kicks a, a, a great, um, a great team goal. James, free kick. Ben's paid to pick it. He'll put it under his arm and go. Two bounces. Lines it up towards Fritch. Got a one-on-one -on -one deep. Spargo doesn't quite go that way. Freeman will get defenders back. Brayshaw opens up. Chance now for Jordan. Goes short. Cleverly. Play on goal. Unfortunately, we give up the direct centre bounce goal straight after that. Uh, I think it was just getting a little bit late in the quarter and uh, the D switched off for, for, just for that, that centre bounce. So in the end of that quarter, Melbourne kicked 2-2, Frio kicked 3-1. Probably the best quarter that Fremantle played for that quarter. D's by 17, but you know, it's alright. Fourth quarter, uh, so we start with Gorn, Oliver, Petrarca and Jordan in the centre again. So Jordan's getting some really good, good minutes here. So it's a bit of an arm wrestle back and forth, some poor kicking. There's a really nice hold of the ball call on Fife here. Next play from Jackson is great. There's another intercept from May, another lever intercept. It's just, I really love watching our defenders play. Um, just incredible stuff. Yeah, another intercept by May, another intercept by Lever. Just intercepts, intercepts, intercepts. It's bloody great to watch. It's really enjoyable. It makes me laugh from the stars. Some really nice stuff from uh, Brayshaw and Oliver. Cos's pressure in this game was elite. You can really see uh, the type of rain that he can do and, and the effort that he puts in. And this is from a, you know, from a guy that lost his mum just before the season and uh, spent three weeks away from the club, but you can just see how focused this guy is on performing at the Olympic level. After nine minutes of back and forth in this quarter, we finally get a goal through Petrarca. It's really great to see Christian taking the most of his opportunities when he's kicking that goal. He has been a little bit hit or miss for his goal kicking, but he definitely gets a hold of that towards the end of the year. Some great pressure continues. Uh, team Max gets some Team Mac gets a great opportunity after the holding the ball call. They're good pressure. You'd like Tom McDonald just to take his 30 seconds. Had a good day. That's Tommy McDonald. 16 disposals. Kick the goal. Taking some strong contested marks. To land what would have to be the knockout blow from downtown. Tommy McDonald. Our second clean centre clearance comes here 
with Oliver Jones and Sparrow in the middle. Unfortunately, it doesn't pay off. So Langdon with a nice clean pickup sends it over to Brayshaw who misses to the left. Unfortunately, Jackson and Sparrow also have uh, goal attempts after this and miss. So we really could have put this one away if we had gotten those, those three goals, but instead the ball goes down the end uh, and Freo ended up kicking a goal, which Gordon might have touched, but I don't think he did in the end. It, it, it's close, but if you can't really see the fingers going back, it's a bit hard to take it off somebody. Great contests, more great contests. Lever just having an absolute day out. More chances not taken, and then Freo kick, kick another late goal, so pretty much evening up this quarter. We end up uh, kicking two goals six to two goals one. We end up running out this game 22 point winners. That was the exact same margin at half time and only two points down difference from quarter time. Yeah, we just kind of got a lead and held on to it. There were some really nice things done throughout the game. Yeah, good start. that takes advantage of space provided by Jetta. Three big forwards and Jackson says, get out of my way. Wow, that is exciting. That is. Melbourne supporters, the way he extended up into the air, can play in the ruck, but whoa, what about that for a key four? Yeah, some good stuff here. So um, some end of the game observations and stats. Return of Tamak. Tamak, he just, uh, he's back. It was his he played one good game in, I think, 2019 against Carlton, where he kicked five and then didn't play the last quarter because he was injured and didn't play the rest of the year. But other than that, this was a return of the 2018 form. He could, he was fit. He didn't look like he got the boat when trying to turn, turn around and do circles. He could move, he was agile, and he ended up taking nine marks. Most of them contested, which was quite brilliant. Oliver at 34 disposals, he is just an absolute jet in the middle. He had nine score involvements, which is just, just phenomenal. Stephen May had 24 disposals, which is just ridiculous. Jake Lever equaled his inter previous record of six intercept marks. He ended up having 12 intercept possessions for the game. Now let's just get on to the uh, set about stats, because I always find this stuff interesting the centre bounce stats. Now there was 23 centre bounces for the game. Clayton Oliver attended 21 of them. So that was 91% of the centre bounces. Max Gore was at 20 with Jackson Beck rucking three of them. We would see this change a bit more later in the year. Christian Petrarca attended 16. James Jordan was the next best at 10. James Harms at 9. And then a bit of a mix between Sparrow, Neil Bullen, Keziah Pickett, Luke Jackson and Nathan Jones attended in the last quarter. So you can see we've got a bit of a spread here between our centre bounces. I think Goody, Goody was just trying to find what put a good, which was a good mix, especially with no Viney playing, and uh, really spread that around between James Jordan getting a really good run at it. So with our kicking stats, Stephen May took six, Christian Salem took two, Jake Lever and Trent Rivers took one each. In all of those occasions, we played on and we played on trying to really kick down the line and get a bit of distance. So I found that was, uh, that was pretty interesting. So our defensive structure was definitely on show. You could see that it was a difference from 2020, especially trying to create that loose man behind the contest. Return of Tamak, as I mentioned earlier, he was just phenomenal. We, I saw there was a, a lot better decision making and a bit of dare with our kicking. So kicking to players a little bit further down the contest, not just taking the safe option and going from there. And then our intercept marking was absolutely unreal. Uh, and now, yeah, the bad. I feel like our disposal could have been a lot cleaner. I feel like we wasted a lot of shots on goal and uh, we were clearly beaten in the centre clearances, especially early in the game. Now we got on top of our, our fair share, but with the, with the contested beasts that we have on our side, I think we definitely should have been better. And now on to our best goal segment, bang, 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 bang. 30 seconds left. 
Little one from Barney. Surely not another one. Handball to Oliver. Streaming through. Bang! Bang, bang, bang! My third favourite goal from the game was Charlie Spargo's goal in the third quarter. Pickett, he'll put under his arm and go. Two bounces. Lines it up towards Fritch. Got a one-on-one deep. Spargo doesn't quite go that way. Fremantle will get defenders back. Brayshaw opens up. Chance now for Jordan. Goes short, cleverly. Play on goal! Spargo on the end of the chain. My second favourite goal was Bailey Fritch's judo kick or karate kick goal with uh, six minutes left in the first quarter. He's towing it over the line. Great power by Petrarca too, wasn't it? Several of that. You just see, you see the quick hands with Oliver there, and we saw it last night with the Western Bulldogs. The Western Bulldogs' ability to, to uh, embrace the. And then tackle. my favourite goal for the game was Ed Blangman's check side in the first quarter. I just thought that was an absolute. Goal. To Oliver in game 100, Harms with the driving ball back towards McDonald. Now Jackson delays the hand pass nicely. Langdon check side. Is he good enough? Before this game, we had the Coaches Association put their votes out. Stephen May got the full 10 from the two coaches, which is pretty pretty awesome. He did have, he, I thought he was best on the ground as well. Clayton Oliver collected seven, Jake Lever collected seven, Tom McDonald with four, and Andrew Brayshaw with two. Then the Brownlow votes, uh, Clayton Oliver picked up three, Tom McDonald picked up two, and Stephen May picked up one. I'm going to be doing my own votes for this season. So we have gone with, yeah, the votes. And I've gone with a 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 uh, count. So Stephen May picks up the 6, having a pretty unreal 24 disposal game. Clayton Oliver picks up the 5 with his 34 disposals and 9 scoring bonkers. Jake Lever with his 6 intercept marks and 6 four intercepts. Tom McDonald for just marking everything and being... Uh, a revelation around the ground. Christian Petrarca was solid as ever, kicked some important goals. And then Charlie Spargo had three direct goal assists, so I gave him the one. So there was three goals directly set up by his brilliant kicking. So that's going to be it for our review of round one, 2021, Melbourne versus Fremantle. Uh, let me know in the comments your thoughts on the game. Is there anything that I missed? Is there anything that you think I got wrong? Feel free to comment. So this is available on YouTube with the videos and then also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And then I have set up a Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. So please uh, give us a follow, give us a like, share, uh, subscribe. We'd really love to get this channel up to a thousand subscribers. And uh, just, yeah, sharing the love of the deeds. So I hope you've enjoyed and more content to come. I'm going to be putting out uh, my own top 50 players for 2021. I saw Robbo's list and went, I think I can do it better. So that will be out later in the week. And then I will be doing round two, Melbourne versus St Kilda. So until then, have a good time and go deeds.